Hi my friends, it's the 25th of October 2021, it's another horrible day, I'll just give you a quick look, it's just full cloud everywhere, threatening rain, we never used to get weather like this in Redcliffe, but these days we get periods where we have weeks, weeks of cloudy weather and very little rain although we have had a couple of days of very heavy rainfall this time very good falls but then we just get weeks of this cloudy weather and 10-15 years ago this never happened but yeah it's quite miserable and it's hard to know what's going to happen and it has sort of been showering we have been getting light showers but the last three or four days hasn't been too bad. The showers have not been too heavy, they've been just very light. So I've really got to take a chance with my spray. Because at the moment those fruit spotting bugs are just starting to get a hold. And a couple of trees in particular, they're close to having serious problems if I don't spray this permethrin now. So I've been holding off, hoping it would clear up because I'd like to spray when it's clear, you know. If, if I spray and it pours rain, well then I'm kind of wasting my spray. But I'm at the point now where I just cannot wait any longer. I've got to spray now, and if it pours raining tonight, which is possible, it's very possible, if it pours raining, well, I'm just going to have to spray again. So i just got to take my chances. Looking at it right now, I think maybe I've got a fairly good chance. I think most of the rain's going on in Brisbane. And with some luck, if it does rain tonight, it won't be much. But yeah, that's some of the... This is one of the more difficult moments of farming. <laughs> when, when you're trying to work around the weather. And yeah, I've got this bug problem. And the permethrin, it's got to go in now. Rain or hail or shine. So let's just hope it doesn't rain. And I'll just quickly give you a look at this again. This is the best sprayer in the world, as far as I'm concerned. It, it's um, Canyon Core. I hope you can see that there. If you want the best hand spray in the world, look for this one. You'll be able to find it on eBay. Otherwise, you pretty well won't find it in any stores which is a conspiracy as far as I'm concerned. There's a conspiracy in Australia to not support this company, which makes the best sprayers in the world. All those sprayers you buy at Bunnings and in the supermarkets, they're all absolute rubbish. They're so cheap and they break, and they don't work properly, they leak. But this sprayer is just incredible. So if you want the best sprayer in the world, and it's not expensive, that's the brand you want to buy. And at the moment, Bok is selling this one. Bok is an electrical company. And like, yeah, you find the real professionals, they make sure they get this sprayer because they know no other sprayer comes close. So yeah, I couldn't even find the right one on eBay last time I looked. Oh, there was some there, but I ended up, I chose Bok. I bought it off Bok. Because, yeah, they're a welding company and, and, and they can't afford to f*** around. And that's basically how it is, you know, when you, if you're a professional and you need a sprayer, you can't f*** around with that shit at Bunnings and the supermarkets, those sh sprayers. If you're a window cleaner or something, to a professional window cleaner, 
or a professional cleaner of any type, this is the spray you need from the Canyon Core. It, it's really good. It's really good. Okay, so I've said that for now. I'll keep reminding you about that. But it's just amazing. They used to sell this sprayer. This is the only sprayer in all the hardwares and supermarkets ever sold. And then for some reason they just stopped selling it. And it's the best. And then they brought in all this cheap garbage, which is, which is just terrible. And, and especially if you're using chemicals, you, you can't have them leaking and dripping on your hands, which is what happens with nearly all those other sprayers. It's just terrible. Anyway, so what we've got here for my spray is I use some liquid copper. I use about 5 mils of this liquid copper in a 500 mil sprayer. I've got the sea sole. I use 2 mil of that, 2 or 3 mil. I think the proper dose is about 1 mil, actually. 1 mil for half a litre, but I use 2 or 3. 3 even is okay, I think. And this is the permethrin I'm using at the moment. This, I find this is the best one. There's not many choices in Bunnings at the moment. This one's 100 grams per litre of permethrin, 25.75. Makes 10 litres of spray. Controls ants, termites, spiders, cockroaches. It's good stuff and it's powerful. There used to be a better brand on the market. This one's got added hydrocarbon liquid. Not sure exactly what that is. They don't explain it very well. But often you find, well, that'll be the spreading agent. And often you find the spreading agent can be worse than the actual chemical. Like with the organic pyrethrin, for instance, they use this spreading agent called piperol butoxide or something. And apparently that's worse than the pyrethrin. And yeah, they use that as a spreading agent, which is just funny how companies do that too. They, they always seem to have to add something bad. So they've got the beautiful organic pyrethrin, and then they add this horrible spreading agent. So I don't know about this one. The pyrethrin is not organic anyway, as you know. I remember mean, it's a synthetic pyrethrin. It's a persistent pyrethrin, and it's not natural. And yeah, it's stronger. It's it's more poisonous. It's not natural like the pyrethrin, but the pyrethrin is poisonous too, of course, even though it's a natural and organically certified poison. But this pyrethrin, uh, I've just had to do it. After 40 years of being an organic farmer, I've just found around here, I've just got to use that pyrethrin. And it's not organically certified, but I've just got to use it. It's the only way I can deal with this fruit spotting bug and a couple of other insect problems in this yard. So, okay, well, for, yeah, for this, it's 12 mil a half litre. I find it doesn't hurt to go a little strong with this stuff, even. So today I'm going to use 15 mil. I go a little bit stronger. I want to make extra sure I kill these critters. I just can't stuff around, like... Um, yeah, I can't muck around with these critters. I've got to get them now or I'm just not going to have as good a harvest with my papayas. See, there we go. See, it's quite a watery solution. 15 mils there. There was another brand that was around that was better. Oh, it's got a strong smell too. It's potent shit. And especially with my bad lungs, I don't want to breathe it. And it's a little bit windy today. It's a pity, but if I'm careful, maybe I can use the wind to my advantage. Just make sure I'm not breathing any of it. Oh, I just got a bit on my finger too then, unfortunately. Which is not good. And there's my liquid copper. But yeah, there used to be a better brand that was an, an oily permethrin. It would seem, because they didn't, there was nothing else listed on the ingredients, they just listed permethrin and it was oily. 
so it had its own spreading agent it seemed and well I just preferred that one but they've stopped selling that now it's funny how that happens and this is the only one on the market now and I've used it a few times so it seems to be okay anyway this is a disease preventer liquid copper so I'm going to spray so I may as well add a few other extras. The permethrin is all I needed for the insects but seeing as I'm going to spray up under the leaves it's a good idea to add a bit of copper too I believe. So you're just doing a couple of things at the same time and the sea salt. This feeds them and helps disease resistance as well. So I just add the three together I find it doesn't hurt. Some things don't like to be mixed, but I, I find this seems to go fine, no problem. Okay, so that's about two and a half mil, two mil, two and a half mil. That's all that's needed there. Okay, and now I'm ready to kill bugs. As you can see, I'm right here next to the car. And those papayas that are between the crammed in tight between the car and the fence. But I'll go around the back. I want to start at the back. There doesn't seem to be much of a bug problem here yet. It's around the backyard where's the real problem. So I'll start around there and I'll give you a look. I'll just turn off the cam and start around there. See, okay, I'm around the back now. One of my back patches. It's getting dark here, yeah, it's about five. Yeah, and it's very cloudy. But I'll just give you a look. That's one of the first. That papaya is showing the first signs of fruit spotting bug damage. So, yeah, if I leave this another few days, even, it could just shit itself very quickly and there's a sign there see that split in the stem that's more of a sign that's an older wound though actually <coughs> of the fruit spotting bug these other trees they're not really affected yet they're looking quite healthy but you know that can just change overnight with that bug the fruit's still pretty badly nipped by that fruit spotting bug and even my nice big gold, my nice big Hawaiian gold, I'll show you here. Oh, it's kind of grown out of it. Yeah, you can't see it now, what I wanted to show you. But yeah, there's some damage up there too. So I've got to get the spray up there. I can jet it, it's pretty high up there, but I can put the spray on jet and get it up there pretty well see these are looking okay but it'd just be good just to get that stuff in now before there's a problem there's that one's sort of all oh, looking a little iffy and that one that one's in trouble there's one papaya here in trouble and i'll get it right now and this one, this is the one I'm the most worried about, that one's in serious trouble. And that's one of my best bearing fruit trees. You see the fruit is really damaged. You know, the fruit's still edible, but yeah, it's just severely savaged by that bug. And now it's warmer, they're turning on the leaves. And that's when now that they seem to stick to the fruit in winter. But then as it warms up they go for the leaves. And that's when they'll kill the tree. Anyway, I'll start on this right now. Oh no, and now it's starting to spit. Oh shit. Oh shit. It was at this moment that he knew. 
he fucked up. Oh, there's a couple of spits then. I won't be able to show you anything. I want to show you as I spray a bit of this. But unless those spits stop. Dang. Dang. See, you can't see much now. I'm sort of leaning over my camera trying to protect it. Oh, shit. No, I've got to get out of the rain. Switching off. Well, folks, as you can imagine, that was a colossal fuck up. <laughs> a monumental fuck up. That's as bad as it can ever go when you try and spray. So, yeah, it caught me. I had to run out of the rain and save this camera. And it was it only spit it was a few spits at first. And then I got everything inside, got the cam and the tripod inside, out of the rain. And then it was quite dark and I thought, well I've just got to use what I've already mixed up. Use that spray and go and get the most affected. The pie trees, give them a spray, whatever happens, rain hail will shine, so. I was tempted to take the camera with me because it stopped, it stopped raining, there was only a few spits. And then I got out there and started spraying. You can just see the corner through there that the pies I was spraying. And yeah, just started spraying and then it rained quite hard. And I got a bit wet. And it was as bad as it can ever be. I was standing in the rain spraying the damn things. As bad as it can ever go. <laughs> so, you know, but this stuff's pretty powerful. I still could have got a kill, I think. I still could have killed a lot of bugs. And it was, well, it was a shower. It was probably the heaviest shower we've had in three days. So, yeah, not good. And times like this, this is when insects can build resistance to poisons. Because it's getting watered down as I'm spraying it on, you know? And insects can build resistance. So I just used that one container. I, I sprayed all the... I, got a, I sprayed a fair few papyrus. Especially the worst affected. But, yeah, it's just not enough. It was a real fail. And I've got to have a crack at it again tomorrow. But, yeah, what's going to happen tomorrow? It could be even worse tomorrow, hey. That's just how it goes at the moment. Reminds me of when I was a young boy and I used to offside for farmers. I worked for farmers for a few years so I could just learn from them. How to do it myself. And Imagine how a poor old farmer would feel if he had like a thousand litre tank of poison and he had the same ultimatum. He's left it too long, he's got a spray, he can't wait any longer. A few not too bad days have passed. So he gives it a go and as soon as he starts spraying it rains. <laughs> I've offsided it for farmers and that's happened. And oh, I can be very frustrated. It would be very frustrating for the poor old farmer. He's investing quite a bit of money in his, his poison and quite a bit of time and the whole lot f up. But anyway, let's hope tomorrow's better. The main thing I'm worrying about now is these bugs are going to build resistance. Because I almost, well, well, I had to spray. It was bad. It was bad. And I think I've had a bit of a kill. I sprayed under the leaves and, and it hasn't rained too hard yet. It just depends on what's going to happen tonight. Because it could pour tonight. It could. Or maybe if there's just slight sprinkles it won't be too bad. 
and hopefully I can have another crack at it tomorrow and just do the same job again. Spray the same trees. So, okay, signing off. Flop today with the flop. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Well folks, it's the next day now, the 26th of October 2021, and this is round two. Ding ding! <laughs> and it could be an exact repeat of yesterday. <laughs> like yesterday I was standing in the rain here, <laughs> applying that um, permethrin to these trees, that's how bad it was. So it wasn't pouring, but it was, it was a shower. <laughs> And uh, you can see the difference. It has still worked and helped a lot, I think. But it, it kept raining through the night. We got a fair bit of rain last night. And yeah, this fertilizer's got its first wet. You could actually see, though, spots of this fertilizer that's still dry. So that's interesting. It just goes to show that it wasn't that heavy. It, it was showers, it was a fair bit of showers, on and off all night, but not so heavy that it just drenched the, the fertilizer at least. And underneath those leaves is still good, there's still some permethrin there. But like I was saying, this, this can be an extra bad thing, spraying these bugs and then it gets watered down with the rain. It, it, it could even build resistance in the bugs. There'd be nothing worse if, than these bugs building resistance to the permethrin. And yeah, for me, I realise now this is really serious stuff. If I don't spray for these bugs, these trees die. That's the fact of it. That's how bad these bugs are around here. They kill papayas. So it's just got to be done. So today could be another repeat. It could be almost identical to yesterday. It could rain any moment. But I'm hoping, like, even if I get an hour, even if I can cover these things and it stays on for an hour, I'm winning. I'm winning. And then hopefully, you know, every hour after that, it's an improvement. You know, and, I, and I'd like to hope it doesn't even rain. I can get more time but yeah it's one of those times when I've just got to keep spraying even though this stuff has well, will last three months without rain I've just got to keep spraying I can't f around with these bugs so okay I'll give you a look how it goes actually it's on a jet right now so I'll turn it down a bit yeah, but yesterday was quite ridiculous. I had I had one already mixed, so I had to use it. I'm glad I did it actually, because you can see a slight difference there. But yeah, now's the time to, I've got to get it again. Get onto it hard the next day. Maybe today I'll have success. So let's just see. And get it up under the leaves. See that one's been bit a bit. Watch it, I'm causing myself even because it's strong stuff. See that tree there? That's there's only two trees here that are affected actually, but the rest will follow pretty soon, and that's one of them. Anyway, let's 
exhale, get out of breath, just squeeze my hand. And it's kind of good that wind in a way. It does clear the air for me. This is a pony too, a uh, sour salt. I mean, look at that, it's, it's just putting out leaves now. It got whipped from those cold spring winds. It, got, it, it, it really had a. It really got hurt this last winter. It was so cold. But hopefully it's going to make it. It should make it. I was listening to a person on raw food. Um, no, sorry. Oz Rare Fruit on Facebook. It's a great page to join. Join them if you like Facebook. You'll learn a lot about fruits, rare fruits in Australia. There was a guy in Sydney who um, gave up on his on his um, sour sop. Not yes, yeah, sour sop. He was trying to grow a sour sop in Sydney. He got it quite big, but it basically died this last winter. And he just sawed it down just recently. It's just finished. Wouldn't re sprout, he reckoned. And he got it to like, oh, might have been seven or eight feet tall. The last winter down in Sydney, that's a, more than a thousand kilometres further south into the colder land. But it just didn't make it. Aww. Okay, hopefully I'm going to have slightly better success today. But again, it could start raining any moment. It's just hard to say. Very good chance even. There's storms everywhere, but Redcliffe tends to get less this time of year. See, there's that sick one again. And there's the other sick one. See, that's both... It's got too much fruit spotting damage already. So, and these trees, they're going well. They've got a good flush of growth. But they'll be just as sad in potentially days. It can just happen overnight. So that's why it's just crucial that I get into it. I've waited a few weeks hoping the rain had stopped, but it just didn't. It just keeps on raining. It'll probably stop in about a week, but I just can't wait any longer. You, know, you can see there, there's a bite. That's fruit spotting bug damage, that line on the leaf there. Yep. I don't know what it's like in other places here in Redcliffe. I, you know, I've, I've probably got the right habitat. It's so overgrown here. But... You know, for me at least, there's no way I'd be growing these trees if I wasn't spraying the permethrin to get that fruit spotting buck. These trees would have died. You know, I had to cut them back last year. And now with, with my knowledge, what I understand about them, yeah, the cutting back, that just sort of slowed them down, that's all. They would have won if it wasn't for this permethrin. They would have won the battle and killed my trees. So yeah, I try and get it under all the leaves. Get the stems as well. You can get the fruit a bit. Got the same mix, the permethrin, 
liquid copper, a bit of sea salt. Oh, I think I saw a bug there behind that yellow fruit. Just ducked around behind it when the spray came. Motherfucker. <laughs> Could have been one of those bugs. There's an extra spray to be sure. damage on that fruit. It had disease in it too. But, but you know, I sprayed it um, nearly two months ago with permethrin. It helped a lot. And just the spray last night, even though it's rain, you can see it's helped. These are very short. I can't quite see any bites, but there's some bites in there for sure. That's my guess. There's a here in the odd spit of rain. They love to get right in that crown actually and get the new tips and they'll just kill the growing tips. See this one's quite bad, that wound there. That's real classic fruit spotting bug damage. Severe. <laughs> Shorter leaves. See very short leaf there. Really needs it. Step back out of the stuff. Step away from the spray. <laughs> It's up in there too, it's in my wine gold. My daughter of a wine gold anyway. But these trees are bigger and tougher, they seem to be able to resist it better than my dwarf ties.
Yeah, it's looking like I'm going to have much better success today. Because that, that's got them. You know, and I've pretty well I've given it a good soak. Giving the trees a good wet this time. From all sides. Yeah, see there's kind of some, see those sort of bendy stems, the stem there with a bend in it, that's a classic sign of fruit spotting bug too. Anyway, I've got to put it on jet to get up there. And nearly run out too. It's nearly a full bottle. Put a bit of that spray on it. I think I've got to fill up again. Finish this tree off and even ideally it's nice to spray the surrounding area too. So even those vegetables, that Madeira vine that I'm eating, But this just gives you an idea what I do anyway. Yeah, I will try. If it keeps holding off, I'll try. I'll fill up again. Come back. I'll probably need to put more. I'll get some of this up at that tree now. The last of it. Then go and mix up another batch. Finish that tree off. Get the surrounding area. I've nearly got a strong theory those fruit spotting bugs love the Madeira vine because it's so juicy and that might be why might be why it's so rampant oh look there's even a hole just there see that more than likely fruit spotting bug Yeah, just about run out. Get another side. Yeah, that's just about it. I better go and reload. <laughs> I better get this a little bit with what's here. It doesn't point up very well now. There's so little left in the bottom. But I'll just hit this one a bit. See, so yeah, I really want this tree to live. This is one of my very best. The fruit are a bit small this time round, but look how much has been chewed by the bugs. But yeah, if I keep this alive, it'll be much bigger fruit next time round. OK, 
Okay, time to reload. Yeah, I've got to hit that some more yet. I'm going to get these trees from the front now I've got them from the back. Hit them again from this side. That big one needs a lot more. Spread a bit around here. And then get these trees. So that gives you an idea anyway what I do. What's got to be done. Or I just won't have any trees. I just won't survive. See there's some signs of fruit spotting bug in there too. And disease. The bug spreads the disease as well. See that papaya. I'm looking forward. That's look, looking good that papaya. This year could be a heavy fruiter. Okay my friends, thanks for watching. Bye for now. Hi folks. Well, a couple of days have passed since I put the permethrin down on, on up, up under the leaves I guess. Up might be more of an accurate description. Put the permethrin on under the leaves and I got five hours this time. It still wasn't that good, but uh, it's good enough for a while though. It's good enough for at least a few weeks, I think. So I'll just keep an eye on things. But, but yeah, I got it all on at about five. I did the whole yard, including these papaya here at the front and the straw bales. And then at about 10 o'clock that night, we just had this massive thunder strike, a lightning strike. It was very close, only like three or four hundred meters away. And then it was just silent for another five minutes. And then it just poured. Absolutely poured. And a lot of the rain was horizontal. It was just, yeah, a pretty big storm. And yeah, being horizontal, it would have got up under those leaves too, unfortunately. But having that permethrin on for five hours, that's not too bad. It's, it's, I'm kind of on top of things now, in my view. And everything is still looking better. Everything's still just growing like crazy. That one in particular, that's my best papaya on the straw bales. Well, that's one of my most promising papayas, actually. Of them all, that's what really shaping up nice. And these two next to it are looking all right too. Like, oh, it's not as, you know, it yeah, could do better in a bit more time. And that one too, there's some fruit there, but you can't see it. That Madeira vine's attacking it. And that one's put out some fruit. And this one too putting out some fruit, but look at that Madeira vine, I wish the neighbours would get on it, it's mostly it's all just growing in the neighbour's yard and coming up over the fence, but I'm going to have to just, I'm going to get that ladder there and reach over any day now, I can't leave it any longer, but yeah there's always so much to do and only so much that I can do, but that'll be one of the next most urgent tasks is to try and rip as much of that material vine as I can. I've got a hook so maybe I can reach over into that yard and pull most of it out, spray some of it with kerosene. And but yeah, anyway, now I'm ready for the next task that I really want to show you. And this is to try and stop any root rot, uh, any stem rot, stem rot or foot rot. They call it, it can happen right down the base of your papayas. Especially like I just watered, I just topped these up with some more fertilizer, some more dynamic lifter and water with the hose. And you can see there even, look, see I've watered with the hose and it wets those stems. And papayas don't like that, getting the stems wet all the time. 
and I think even especially with the town water because it's it's less than ideal water. Plants don't really grow all that well in the town water and need the rain water. So yeah, you remember I put the drippers in now. I've got drippers there now. I'll be mostly using the drippers. You can just see that little blue dripper there. I'll be mostly using the dripper. There's the little blue dripper there again. I'll be using drippers for all my papayas soon. I'll fix those lines up outside, around the back too. And replace those micro jets with drippers. To keep those stems dry. And then what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to make up that paste I was telling you about. 